Hey, okay, so here's video two. Like I said in the last one, I can't travel, so I'm here in my kitchen and I'm gonna make some of my favorite recipes from here in my hometown and across small towns because this next one is not from my hometown, it's from my mother's. So if you are from a hometown, you know exactly what these are. You know that these are cookbooks that every small town has, every church, every WMU, every homemakers, every daughters of the blank, daughters of the revolution, have made these cookbooks as fundraisers. PTOs, PTAs, they've all done them. And they are recipes that are submitted by members from the community and are oftentimes the recipes that you see at like the church potlucks, or the church dinners, or the funeral dinners, or whatever the occasion may be for the dinner here in a small town. This one, this cookbook, is from my mother's hometown, um, so it's from 50 minutes down Highway 231 from here. And I was going through it this morning and I found this recipe because I'm on a pecan kick and I thought, let's do this one. They call it a Louisiana pie. I'm pretty sure we call it a pecan, not a pecan pie. We call it a derby pie here in Kentucky. Um, but that's kind of trademark because so you can't really say it, blah, blah, blah. So it's called a Louisiana pie and its main ingredient are, is, are pecans? Yes, pecans. So shall we do it? This recipe was, of course, as all of these were, submitted by women or people from the community. And <sighs> let's go. So we're gonna start with a pie shell. I use these only if I'm out of the already made ones. I prefer those. I think the real flavor comes from the pie and I don't waste a lot of time with my pie crust. So, but I love these pie tins that we sell on the site. So I thought I have these, I'm gonna make this feel fancy today in our enameled pie pan. So we're gonna do that in a second. We're gonna start with the ingredients. And that is going to be combining our sugar, our butter, and our salt. And we have a cup of brown sugar. I'm trying to memorize this, but we'll see how good I am. This is tightly packed. We have a half a cup of white sugar. So, and then we have a pinch of salt, and we don't have a dash. A dash is one eighth of a teaspoon, so basically nothing. A pinch is half of that, so one, tenth, one sixteenth of a teaspoon, and a smidge is a one thirty second of a teaspoon. So basically a dash is the salt that can fit between your fingers. There's no real need to measure it. I don't even know if they make a one eighth of a teaspoon. So. Anyways, we've got our salt, we've got our two different types of sugar, and now we're gonna throw in our butter. I melted the butter. Even though this recipe doesn't say to melt it, I really think it ought to. So, we've got that melted, we've got that poured in. I'm gonna try and do this all in one take, but as I'm doing it, it feels like a dumb idea. Anyways, we've got that in. We're gonna whisk this together. The brown sugar is tightly packed, so that, means it's gonna break up pretty quickly, and then we're gonna have a nice, um, pretty dry mixture, but we're gonna keep going. The next ingredient that we're going to add are our eggs. You should add these one at a time, but I messed up and I'm not redoing it. I put them all in a bowl at once because I like to measure them out because I'm really bad at cracking and I get shells and everything. So you can do one at a time, or you can be like I am and have egg whites hanging all over the side of this. Let's not do that. We're going to whisk these in one at a time. If you do it all at once, you tend to have a really goopy mixture that just doesn't work and doesn't want to incorporate. And then you end up with big chunks of yolk or big chunks of egg white. You don't get the uniform mixture and like with the bread pudding, nobody wants a quiche. <laughs> quiche is a different recipe, different video. These are desserts, not quiche. So we've got these whisked together. I'm using this bowl that is farmhouse pottery, like I will use in almost every one of these videos. I love it. It's handmade in Vermont. It's got a pour spout, which I've never used, but it's pretty and aesthetically pleasing. So mixed. I should have one of those cameras over the top but I don't. 
And then after that is in, we're gonna stir in vanilla. It calls for one teaspoon of vanilla, but I use a very cheap imitation vanilla extract because it's from the Dollar General, because that's what we have in town. And I haven't been to Williams Sonoma in a couple months to stock up on good quality. So go heavy. The flavor, just go heavy on it. It's not gonna, it's just gonna add more flavor. You can also substitute bourbon if you would rather have bourbon than vanilla, or you can kind of just add both. I think almost any pecan dish always is better if you add bourbon or chocolate or both. It's also more Kentucky if you add bourbon, but this is a Louisiana pie, so let's stick with what it calls for. After that, we have our flour that I did not, yes I did, I did measure it out. Two tablespoons of flour. This is truly just enough to act as a thickening agent. It's kind of like adding cornstarch and stuff. It just makes it thicker, a little bit cakier, but not enough to really change the texture of this from a pie to a cake. Two tablespoons. So we've got that. We're gonna whisk that in. And we've got our cream going in next. So I'm using heavy whipping cream, which is what the recipe calls for. And I have a half a cup of that. I love this measuring cup. It's actually brand new. It looks like a reproduction, but you never have to worry about washing off the increments in the dishwasher because it's etched into the glass. It's actually raised, it's not etched. So we're gonna whisk that in and then we're gonna add our very last ingredient. And those are the pecans and I'll switch over to the spatula for that. That is crazy easy. And then we're gonna plop our pie shell and we're gonna be good to go. So we've got our we've got our mixture all whisked together. Got that, put that there, and our pecans. These this is one cup of loosely chopped pecans. I usually buy pecan halves because I like to make pralines. I like to make pies. I find the chopped are just they're not as versatile as getting the halves, and then you can just chop them with a big butcher knife. So I like a loose chop. I don't like them super fine, and I'm gonna add just a few more because I can because that's what I want to do. So, we've got that. We're gonna fold this in. Doing it with a whisk would just be kind of weird. So, we've got that mixed together. Now, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna be done. It's that simple. I sprayed this. I don't think you have to, but since I've never used this pan before, I just got it out of the store, I wanted to give this crust the extra hope that it will come out clean. So we're gonna unroll it. This is just a regular Pillsbury, as I've already said. We're gonna unroll it. I am not a stickler for making super pretty pie crusts. I love things to look very, very rustic. So I, I don't take the fork and I don't do the fluting and I don't do the trimming and blah, blah, blah. I just don't. I, I like it to look much more homemade. And if you are the person who takes the fork all the way around, good for you. I have a beautiful antique fork that would do it great, but I don't need that. I just don't need it. It's also not gonna change the taste of the pie. So, this is ready, in my opinion. I mean, it would look cute if we added that, but we're not going to. And now we're gonna use this handy pour spout. We've got it ready, and we're just gonna dump this in. Super, super simple. This is why I love pies. They are so much easier than cakes. And they don't have to be pretty. They just have to be good. And they're almost always good. So, look at that. Just perfect color. It's, there we go. We have a Louisiana pie in under 10 minutes. Now it's gonna go in the oven. The oven is at 375 degrees, and we're gonna cook it for 40 to 50 minutes, or until you insert a knife or a fork. I always use a fork just because I'm used to a fork in the center, and if it comes out clean, that means it is done, which is similar to how you would do with a cake. Um, do it within the center, and then we'll be back in just a second. Well, in an hour. Okay, so the pie's out of the oven. It's getting really dark, so I'm gonna do this video really quick because I don't like artificial light. I like natural light. I think it complements the style of the farmhouse better and I think it just looks better even though I really should have a light up there. It just wouldn't feel real. So 
Pies out of the oven. I like this pie. I'm not in love with this pie. So I did look up a derby pie recipe and this is basically a derby pie without chocolate. Um, if you're familiar with Kentucky Derby, which you probably are, um, the derby pie is as synonymous with the derby as a mint julep. Um, if you don't know what a mint julep is, that's your homework. But anyways, this is a chocolate-less derby pie. Also, Derby Pie would have bourbon in it. We used vanilla instead because we're Baptist. And yeah, it also is a little more burnt on the crust than I would like. And when this happens, I tend to um, wrap my pie with aluminum foil when I'm baking it just to prevent the crust from burning. So I'm probably, I should have stopped this video here. I should show this and say this is beautiful, it's going to taste delicious, and I'll post some stills with the whisk whipped cream on it. And I'll do this pause so in case I need to cut the video right there, I can. But we're going to try cutting it. And if it doesn't go well, there's going to be an abrupt end right here. Let's see where it goes. So we are going to cut this. Um, and hopefully it will come out. It should cool a little longer. But again, it's getting dark. If it were to set up and it were allowed to cool, it would come out much cleaner than it is. But there's no fun in that. Absolutely no fun in that. So here we go. And it's going to come out as terribly as you think it's going to. But I just want to see what it looks like. And we have whipped cream right here that I have left over from our bread pudding that I made today. Even though I changed shirts, you don't know that I made it today, but I did. And I'm gonna post it like I did it a few days later. But, put the glasses on, gonna change the shirt, you never know. Also, this is a shirt from our website. So, if you look at it, you can tell that it's not a custard pie. There's no custard in it. It is what we in the South would call closer to a chess pie. Um, if you've never had chess pie, I recommend a chocolate. And we will definitely be making that in future videos. But this is, it's thicker because it's got the flour. Um, it's got the nuts. It's not that creamy, goopy thing that we love with pecan pies. It has more of a cake thickness to it, but it should be really good. It's not the prettiest, but oftentimes pies aren't. So whipped cream on top and you're good to go. You could also do vanilla ice cream, but I don't like ice cream. I hope you will make one for yourself. I would recommend adding the chocolate. You can add the bourbon. I won't because I'm Baptist, but you can if you would like. And if you're ever at a flea market or a yard sale or anywhere and you see these old cookbooks, especially ones from your community, from churches in your community, from schools, from the WMU, from the homemakers, from whatever, pick them up. They're a fun little anthropological dive into the history of your community and the people that were there. And especially if you're a trans, if, if you're a transplant to your community, it's such a great way to learn about the history of your community. Um, I know I have several of these in storage from my town here, and I love that I know the people from them. They're the people that were making for all of the potlucks at church when I was a kid. So we're gonna do a lot of those recipes, but I wanted to start with this one because I found it in the cabinet this morning and I thought, ooh, this is something I wanted to write about for the website. Let's make a video because that's a lot easier. Here we go. Well, I hope you enjoy this and I can't wait till we do video number three. But until then, 